I just finished my presentation a few minutes ago, and the last question I got from the audience was more of a comment, where the gentleman said that he didn't quite understand the genetics I presented, and his wife next to him was crying, and it was a happy cry, and that he wanted to say thank you because the research has lifted the hopes of the people with, and the families with Sturge Weber syndrome. And that was so touching to me, it was such an emotional moment for me. I feel like returning the thanks, and I feel that we're all on the same team, even though I'm off in my lab and not experiencing this in the same way as the families are. We're all on the same team, and it was so emotional for me in the most wonderful way to share this feeling of goodwill that we are making progress and that we all have some hope. The experiment that we did was to take DNA from um, purified from the port wine stain or affected part of the body and from the same individual take DNA from blood that we hypothesized was not affected and sequence the whole genome of all three billion base pairs and then compare them. And so this is um, asking, here's three billion base pairs, here's three billion more base pairs. And it turns out when you sequence a genome, you don't just do it once, you do it 50 times over. And so we actually looked at 700 billion base pairs of DNA and compared them. And this is what the students in the lab did. This is what we do when we come in. And we have very nice computers to do this. And it takes a whole lot of programming knowledge. So we move away from biology and genetics over to computers and say, okay, here's 700 billion base pairs. What do we see that's different just in the affected Sturge-Weber syndrome samples? And we only had enough budget to do three of them. And so that's all we did. Three individuals, um, for better or worse, I don't know who they are, but anyone who makes a donation of tissue is doing something courageous and wonderful, and we treat it as precious.